Okay, I'm going to go over a few different problems today, and this probably should have been my first review for the second part of our course because uh, this will be fairly simple problems just going over really definitions of, of, of material for this part of the course. So this first problem is from a link I have on my web page for additional practice problems for test two. And you're basically given two points A and B here, and you're trying to perform certain tasks down here that are just really checking to see if you know what the notation means. So first we want to check what B plus 2A is. And what you're supposed to do is treat these like vectors. So I have 2 minus 2 for 2a, and I want to add that to 1, 3. So 2 plus 1 is 3, and then the minus 2 plus 3 will be 1. So this should be 3, 1. This is the vector from a to b, and it's squared means that you're dotting it with itself. So multiplication will be dot product. And so we want to check to see what um, this b minus a squared is. It's just the dot product of a certain vector with itself. So uh, the vector going from a to b is going to be 0, 4. And we want to dot that with itself. So we should get 16. Another interpretation of taking a vector and dotting it with itself is it's the length of the vector squared. So we could have just taken the distance from A to B and squared it. And so that just means you're taking 1 minus 1 squared plus 3 minus a negative 1 squared. That would have given you 16 again. So just the square of the distance from A to B. For part C, this means we're translating every point that we put here by B, which means we're just really adding B to A. So we're going to take the sum of these two. And so this is just going to be 2 and 2 here. So 1 plus 1 and 3 plus a negative 1. So the answer should just be 2, 2. And finally, this part D is a rotation about A by the angle pi. And we're taking B and rotating it about A. Now B and A here both have an x coordinate of 1. So maybe just to clarify in a picture here, so I've drawn in the x-axis and the y-axis. Uh, a and B again have an x-coordinate of 1, so they're on this line. And A is going to be at 1 minus 1, so it's down there. And B is at 1, 3, so it's up 3 from the x-axis. And what we want to do, to clarify, is to rotate B around A by pi. And we're doing counterclockwise, but that doesn't make a difference when it's by pi. So we're going around A by pi. So B should be the other side of A. And since this is 1, 2, 3, 4 up, it should be 4 down, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it should be right there. So that's where the rotation of B about A is, just right there. And we can see what that point is. It's 1 over and 5 down. So we're at 1 minus 5. So that's the answer to part D. And that's all there was to this problem. Next problem, we're given two points A and B, and C is taken to be this. And you want to explain why C is on line AB using a theorem we had from class. So there was a last page of this test that had theorems written on it. So part of the problem here was to actually make sure you, you could figure out which theorem to use. So the student had to go to the last page, determine the right theorem. So that part's going to be you know, hidden here because I'm just going to tell you what the theorem is. But you had to look at the last page to get the right theorem to make sure you're understanding this concept correctly. So this is the theorem we want. And this theorem is straightforward in, in terms of this because all we want to do is to use the same a, b, and c uh, that we have up here down here. I'm not going to change a to anything else. It's whatever a was up here. And b is whatever b was up here. And c is whatever c was up here. 
the only thing I need to do is define t, and you can see I need a one tenth times b. So t should be one tenth. One minus one tenth will be nine tenths. So that'll be what's being multiplied by a. So in terms of the work, you just need, really need to be say, take a, b, and c to be as in theorem one, and take t to be one tenth. And then you get that this point has to be on the line through a and b. So that's all there really was to this problem. Let's look at the next question. Again, this is going to be a, a notation question to make sure you understand what all these things are saying. Uh, this is saying we have four points, and the distance from A to B is the same as the distance from C to D. So again, really, this is a distance squared. But of course, if those are the same, then the distances are the same. So we want four points, and we want the distance from A to B to be the same as the distance from C to D. So we have some picture like this given this first part. Now this is telling us the distance from A to C should be the same as the distance from B to D. We can see in this picture the distance from A to C is not the same as the distance from B to D. So how do we have to adjust this, keeping these lengths the same, but we want the length from A to C and the length from B to D to be the same. So I'm just gonna turn that so they are. So now we have these two distances are the same, the distance from A to C and the distance from B to D. So these lengths are the same, that's given to us, and these lengths are the same. You can see it looks like right now we have a parallelogram. And the last bit of information is this, we have dot products being zero, so that's saying something about uh, things being perpendicular here. This is the vector from B to A and the vector from C to A. So these vectors are perpendicular, which means I have a right angle here. And we don't need this because this is really saying, going to give us the same conclusion here. We're going to have a right angle here because the vector from A to B and the vector from D to B are perpendicular. But if one of these is perpendicular in this picture, the other will be. And so we're going to get then that uh, we have more of a picture like the following. So we have right angles here. These sides are perpendicular. And now you can see what the situation is. It looks like we have a rectangle. Certainly the first choice here is not going to be good, B, C, D, or on a circle center at A. That certainly doesn't seem to be the case. A, B, C, and D are the four vertices of A square. Well, that could be true. In fact, if they were, then the B, C, and D would be on a circle centered at A. So maybe that's a, a reason these both can't be true. Um, but it says which one of the following must be true. So uh, these both can be true, but neither of them must be true. What must be true is that these are the vertices of a rectangle. And so the right choice here is three. So we should pick three for our answer. So that finishes this problem. The last two problems I want to look at are problems related to vectors and making sure we know how to use vectors. But in a lot of ways, this is still definitions because these are about midpoints. And I just want to make sure you know what midpoints are. I can use the very basics of ve vectors to say something about some geometric picture. So here we have a triangle ABC, and D is the midpoint of BC here. E is the midpoint of AC. F is the midpoint of AB. And G is the midpoint of the line segment DE. And I dotted in this part because what we're trying to show is that F, G, and C are, are all on a straight line. And that G is the midpoint of CF or FC here. So let me move some things up here and just clarify first that the two things we have to show is really just one thing. If I can show G is the midpoint of CF or FC, that's going to be enough. If I know G is right in the middle of this line segment, then that means they're on a straight line and G is the midpoint like we want of CF. So part of the reason for me saying this and making this clear and noticing that right away is not because it's the first thing you should do, it is, but the real reason is so that I have more space here. I can get rid of this part up here 
and just look at the picture. But we still need to know the information about these points being midpoints, and G here is a midpoint of ED. So what's the idea here? We have something we're trying to prove, that G is the midpoint of the segment FC. But all the points here, D, E, uh, and F, and G, all can be written in terms of A, B, and C. A, B, and C is a starting here, and then we're taking midpoints after that. So what we should do is just go ahead and write things in terms of A, B, and C. So I'm going to write G in terms of A, B, and C, and the midpoint of F, C in terms of A, B, and C, and we're going to see if they're the same. So first, let me begin with F. It's the midpoint of AB. So I can put that up here out of the way for us. F is A plus B over 2. That's how you get the midpoint. You just take the average of the two points, A and B, the endpoints. So F is the average of A and B. Now let's go ahead and compute G here. G is the average of D and E. That's what's given to us. It's the midpoint of DE. D is the average of B and C, so I'll replace D with one-half B plus C. And E was the midpoint of AC, so I'll replace E with one-half A plus C. So this is what I have, this one-half out here. D, again, is the average of B and C, and E is the average of A and C. And now you can see if I'm just trying to write G in terms of A, B, and C, I have that here. I'll simplify it, but I have A plus B and 2c, so a plus b plus 2c over 4. So that's g in terms of a, b, and c. What about the midpoint of fc? Well, the midpoint of fc is the average of f and c, so the midpoint of fc should be this. Again, we don't know it's g, we're trying to prove that it is, but we can rewrite this now in terms of a, b, and c. F is A plus B over 2. And see, I'm just keeping the same. So I just have one half of F plus C. And again, this is now what we want. It's in terms of A, B, and C. So I can rewrite this as A plus B plus 2C over 2. And then divided by 2 gives me A plus B plus 2C over 4. So I've computed G in terms of A, B, and C. And I've computed the midpoint of F, C, or C, F in terms of A, B, and C. And are they the same? Yes. So that shows that G has to be the midpoint of FC because they're both equal to the same thing in terms of A, B, and C. So that finishes what we want. We get that these two expressions are the same for G and the midpoint of FC or CF. So let's go to the last problem. Here we have a triangle on the bottom, A, B, C. And I have P is the point alongside AB that is midway between point B and the midpoint of AB. Okay, so the midpoint of AB is here, and P is really being defined as a midpoint of that midpoint and B. So in other words, if I compute the midpoint of segment AB, I get this point, and then I want the midpoint of the segment joining B to this point, and that's P. Similarly, for Q, if I take the midpoint of BC, I get this point, and the midpoint of this point and B will be Q. Here we have on the other side, AC here. This is the midpoint of segment AC, and the midpoint of segment A going to this midpoint here is R. So that's what P, Q, and R are, and we want to explain why the midpoint of AQ, from vertex A to Q here, is the same thing as the midpoint of the segment PR. So we want to pr prove that those two segments have the same midpoint. Let me move things around here, make this triangle a little bigger. Uh, again, what we're trying to prove is that the segment joining AQ and the segment joining P and R have the same midpoint. So what we want to do is to rewrite everything in terms of A, B, and C again. Because A and B and C are the initial points of the triangle, and P, Q, and R, we should be able to write in terms of them. And then the midpoint of A, Q, and the midpoint of P, R, we should also be able to write in terms of A, B, and C. 
And we'll just check then if we have the same thing. So let's deal with the midpoint of AQ first. I need to write Q in terms of A, B, and C. Q is a midpoint of the segment joining B and this midpoint here of BC. The midpoint of BC is B plus C over two, so that's this point. And we want the midpoint of this point and this point. So we're going to get the midpoint of the line segment joining these two, B to the midpoint of BC, is the average of B and this midpoint of BC, which is B plus C over two. So this is the average of B and C, so it's the midpoint of segment BC. And then the midpoint of B to that midpoint is going to be this average. Everything's in terms of A, B, and C here. Just to simplify, we'll have 3B plus C over 2 times this extra 1 half will give us 3B plus C over 4. So now I can take the midpoint of AQ. It's just going to be the average of A and Q here. And Q we just computed. So it's the average of A and this expression 3B plus C over 4. Again, this is just coming from what Q was. So we add this, we're going to have 4A plus 3B plus C over 4 times an extra 2 in the denominator. So we get 4A plus 3B plus C over 8. So that is the expression then for the midpoint of AQ. So let me go ahead and put that up there. The midpoint of AQ, again, was this 4A plus 3B plus C all divided by 8. Now let's do the same thing with the midpoint of PR. Those were the two things we were trying to show are equal, the midpoint of AQ and the midpoint of PR. So for this, I need to find both P and R in terms of A, B, and C. P is the average of B and the midpoint of AB, and the midpoint of AB, again, is the average of A and B. So we get the average of A and B for the midpoint of AB, and then the average of B and that midpoint for P. So we can see here we're going to have A plus 3B over 4 when we simplify, or 3B plus A over 4, and that will be what P is. Now we want to do the same thing with R. R is the average of A and the midpoint of AC, which is the average of A and C. So the average of A and C is giving me this midpoint of AC, and then the average of A and that midpoint is giving me R. So we can see here we're going to have 3A plus C over 4 when we simplify. Now the picture I don't need anymore because I'm trying to find the midpoint of PR, and I have what P and R are in terms of A, B, and C. So I'll just do that without the picture now. And the average of P and R for the midpoint of PR is going to be, well, we just plug in what P and R are. We got that this was P and this was R, so I'm just putting them in there. And we want the average. Well, let's see, we're going to have 4A, we're going to have 3B, and we're going to have a C, all divided by 8. So we have 4A plus 3B plus C over 8. And let me go ahead and move this up here so we can see where that midpoint is again. That's the midpoint of P and R. What we're trying to show is that these two midpoints are the same, and you can see, in fact, that we have verified that because they're both written the same way in terms of A, B, and C. And so that shows that these two midpoints are the same. And that finishes our explanation as to why the midpoint of AQ is the same as the midpoint of PR. So that finishes the problems I wanted to go over in this lecture, and I'll end the lecture here.